الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا سبحان تعالى سزن القرآن عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شبوع إلى وقبائل لتعارفوا شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله يتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you into tribes and nations so that you may get to know one another. Indeed, the best among you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous and Allah is the most knowing and well acquainted. And in continuing this discussion, about our responsibilities towards other people in our community and our responsibilities in general as Muslims. One of the things that we want to think about in analyzing this verse is how we treat each other with regards to our prejudices. That what are the prejudices that exist within my heart? What are the racisms that I've been accustomed to and, what are the, and how does that affect my behavior and how I treat my brothers? That racism is something that is real and exists within every single person even at a small level or at a big level and it's something that we need to address. That every single person has some form of prejudice in their hearts, whatever it may be. And I have to ask myself, how is that manifesting and what am I doing to fight against it? That who are the people that I'm inviting into my gatherings? Who are the people who I'm saying salam to? Who are the people that I'm subconsciously pushing away because they look different from me? Or because they're from a different background than me? Or because they believe something different from me? And how is this different from the, the legacy that our beloved Prophet wasallam left? That even the Sahaba, some of them had struggled with, with racism and it was something that the Prophet used to used to reprimand them about. That one day Bilal Razulah who who was a slave and one of the one of the first Sahaba, one of the first Muslims, was talking to Abu Dhar al Ghifari Razulah Anhu who was also one of the first Muslims and they were both very well known Sahaba and and the Prophet used to say very good things about both of them. And one day they're discussing and they, they end up in an argument and the argument gets heated over time and is going back and forth and Bilal Rajul Ahnu, he's a slave from Abyssinia and so Abu Dhar eventually he says, oh you son of a black woman as an insult and after this happens the Prophet wasallam he eventually hears of this and he becomes angry. And this is one of the few times that the Prophet ﷺ, he actually becomes fully, genuinely angry. And he says to Abu Zar, Abu Zar, there's still some jahiliya left in you. That, and in other narration, that, that we are all the son of a black woman. Referring to, you know, their lineage. And it's not to say that this that this, it's it's not to put them down, but to say that everyone has some form of prejudices within them, and we all need to strive against it because it becomes a problem when these things become institutionalized at our communities, at our government levels. It becomes a problem that when 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 a parent says that you can only marry so and so people that becomes a problem when a person when a person uh, when a person avoids certain communities certain places simply because there are people there who have a certain skin color when a person avoids certain massages and goes to other massages simply because of the makeup of who goes there when a person makes, fosters a community environment that, that favors people from a certain back, ethnical background and as a result subconsciously pushes away people from another background. That's not the legacy that we're asked to live up to. 
And that becomes a problem at an institutional level because then the institution as a whole manifests the racism that exists within our hearts. Over the past few weeks, we've seen examples of this at a national level. And it's something institutionalized racism has been in this nation since its beginning. But over the past few weeks, we've seen, for example, in the case of, of, of Eric Brown and, and Michael Gardner, we've seen, insta we've seen instances of police brutality that have no explanation, no, no, no justification, nothing other than to say that this is a form of racism that has become institutionalized. And it becomes institutionalized when we become okay with it. When we sort of become apathetic about it and don't do anything about it. And dealing with it has to start within ourselves. That I have to ask myself, really, am I, am I living up to this or am I becoming complacent about my prejudices? Am I allowing myself to think certain things that are not becoming of what the Prophet ﷺ taught us? That one of the Um, um Ayman Barak was one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And she was a person who was with the Prophet ﷺ, one of the few people who was with him from his birth all the way until later on. And she was a person, she, she was from, uh, she was also black and she was a person who the Prophet ﷺ said later on that if any of you seek to marry a woman from the woman of paradise, then they should marry Um Ayman Baraka. That if there was any problem with marrying someone from a different cultural background than you, then why would the Prophet ﷺ have told his companions who were Arab and from different places that they should marry this person. That when she eventually married Zayd ibn Haritha and they had a son by the name of, of Usama, that the Prophet ﷺ used to love Usama so much that he would put him on one knee and he would put his own grandson Hussein on the other knee and he would use to make dua for them. That if there was any problem with this sort of thing, with having, you know, relations and family relations and so on with people from different backgrounds then there would be no problem there the Prophet ﷺ was fully comfortable with these things was fully comfortable with diversity we need to be aware of these things and not let ourselves become complacent with whatever we've been taught growing up whatever we've been taught from the people around us about how we should treat people from other backgrounds how we should treat people based on what they believe because that's not what we're taught to do. We're taught that Allah judges people only based on the righteousness of their deeds. And there should be no other qualification that we bring before helping someone, before greeting someone, before inviting them into our gatherings, or anything of that sort. This is something that in thinking about what are my responsibilities towards my brother, this is something that I have to be cognizant of, the prejudices that exist within my heart. And it's serious because if I don't do anything about it, then I become responsible for the problems that exist in our communities and in our society as a whole. So it's something that we ask Allah to protect us from racism, hatred, or any sort of these things that afflict the heart.